In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It seems that after Jesus was raised from the dead, his disciples often had a difficult time recognizing him. The evening after his resurrection, he walked alongside two of his disciples going to Emmaus. They couldn't recognize him throughout their entire conversation on the road, even though the whole time their hearts were burning within them. Then, seven of his apostles were out fishing all night. And in the morning, they saw him on the seashore, but for the longest time, they couldn't tell that it was him. And here at the empty tomb, Mary Magdalene stands right in front of the risen Jesus and can't recognize him as her dear Lord and teacher, even though he's close enough for her to touch. Mary Magdalene did not recognize Jesus by sight alone. Now, we don't know why Mary couldn't recognize Jesus, and any guesses that we could offer would only be that. Guesses. We know that she supposed him to be the gardener. After all, that's what would have made sense. Big, beautiful gardens near big cities like Jerusalem frequently had gardeners tending to them. So who else would have been in the garden at that early hour? She wasn't expecting to see anyone else. She was expecting to see a stone firmly in place in front of the tomb. She was expecting to see a dead body. And thus, her eyes deceived her, refusing, unable to see the truth that was standing right before her. Her sight failed her. But if there's anything that we learn from the scriptures, it's that it's often hard to recognize the Lord by sight alone. We've already mentioned the accounts of the disciples after Jesus' resurrection who couldn't recognize him. And then St. Paul, later on, after Jesus had ascended into heaven, had a vision of the Lord on the way to Damascus and had to ask Who are you, Lord? And in the Old Testament, Jacob, the night before he was supposed to meet with his estranged brother Esau, wrestled with the Lord beside the river Jabbok. And one theologian has commented that in that moment, Jacob didn't know whether he was wrestling with God or the devil. Throughout history, how often the Lord's followers have difficulty recognizing their God by sight alone. And we are no better than our fathers in this regard. We are not always able to recognize the Lord just by sight. Oh, we think we are. We think we're able to spot God here and there and everywhere, but in truth, we're not. How often do we fail to recognize our Lord and teacher? How often, like Mary Magdalene at the tomb, do we expect to see one thing, and then upon seeing another, we assume that there's no way that that was the Lord? Or on the opposite side of the coin, how often have we observed something and then assumed that it was God, even though we had no sure word from him that it was? The problem is that we assume that we can figure out the presence or the will of God based on some bit of luck, some good turn, or conversely, some roadblock. We think that we can tell whether God is there or isn't, whether he is for us or against us, based entirely on these earthly events that we see with our eyes, and then we believe that we can decipher and interpret. But at the root of this is the exact same problem that Mary Magdalene had, that 
all of the Lord's followers have had at some point or another. We think that God must fit into our expectations. Like Mary Magdalene, we have our expectations of what we'll see when we're looking for the Lord. She expected to see a dead body, a corpse wrapped in linen strips. And then when she didn't see that, nothing else that she saw would convince her otherwise. Not even two angels sitting in the empty tomb. Even when her living, breathing Lord stood in front of her, she assumed that he was the gardener. He didn't fit into what she was expecting to see. And what of you? What are you expecting to see when you look for your Lord and God? A wish granter? A money giver? A kindly, permissive grandfather? Do you expect to see someone who irons out all of the wrinkles in your life? Someone who removes all of the roadblocks if you just do what you think he wants you to do? Or do you expect to see nothing more than a myth, a legend, a nice story, a dead teacher of morals and ethics? If these are the things that you're looking for, chances are these are the only things that you're going to find. You'll start to worship this God, lowercase g, this God of your expectations, this God that was born out of your imagination. And then what happens when that mirage God, that mirage Jesus, evaporates? What happens when you can't see this illusion of your own making anymore? You know, you get frustrated, angry, sad. Like Mary Magdalene, you turn away, casting your eyes everywhere, anywhere, hoping to seek, seeking to catch a glimpse of what you were looking for, what you were expecting to see. The Lord is not known by sight alone. This much should be clear from our reading about Mary Magdalene today. Your eyes will deceive you. Your imagination is going to fall far short in conjuring up an image of what God should be. Your mind will falter and stumble as it tries to describe what's possible and impossible, what's true and what isn't. So repent. Repent of trusting these faulty lenses and instruments. Repent of trying to paint God as you would have Him. Repent of turning away from the real Jesus simply because He didn't fit your expectations. Repent of thinking that you could decipher God's will and mind based on your interpretation of events. Repent and turn. Turn your ears toward him and listen. For it is only in listening that you will know your Lord and teacher. The Lord makes himself known to faith through his word. At the river Jabbok, Jacob didn't recognize his Lord that he was wrestling with until the Lord spoke and gave Jacob a blessing. And Paul didn't know that Jesus was Lord until the Savior spoke his name to Paul. After Easter, the disciples didn't know that Jesus was in their presence until he talked with them. And Mary Magdalene didn't know that her dear Lord was standing right in front of her until he spoke her name, Mary. And likewise, it's only in his word that you can rightly recognize and know your Lord.
It's only in his promises that you can see him for who he is. You cannot trust your eyes or your intelligence when it comes to knowing and recognizing your God. If you try that, he'll always remain hidden from you, elusive, one step beyond your grasp. If you trust your eyes and your ability to determine the truth about God based solely on what you see, then you would have to assume that the apostles were in the wrong when they preached the good news because of all of the roadblocks that they hit because of the way that they were put to death for the faith. In fact, if you trusted your eyes, then you would have to conclude that even Jesus, the eternal Son of God, had lost the love of his Father because all your eyes will tell you is that a man died on a cross, utterly forsaken. So don't trust your interpretation of events to your eyes and your fallen mind. Instead, if you would know him in truth, listen to what he says. Listen as he speaks your name at the baptismal font, when you were first named in the presence of God's people. Listen as that word brought you into his family, into his promises of forgiveness and eternal life. Listen as he proclaims forgiveness to you through the mouth of the man who has been sent to preach that your sins are removed from you, that your Lord has died on the cross to redeem you, that he has risen to seal your salvation for eternity. Listen as your resurrected Savior tells you that this is his body and this is his blood, given and shed for you so that he can be as close to you as possible, in communion with you, sharing his life to strengthen you through your trials and tears. Hear him in his word as you read the scriptures, as the church prays in the liturgy that we share. Hear him and know him there and only there in his word. Your eyes may deceive you, but his word will not. The events of your life may be confusing and hard to navigate, but his promises are clear and simple, never changing, never broken. Even though you may stand with Mary Magdalene beside some grave, confused, lonely, hurting, or you might even be staring down your own grave, afraid. Close your eyes and listen. Hear him as he calls your name even now, the echo of when your name was spoken by him at your baptism. Hear him call you to receive his forgiveness and life in faith to join him and all of the saints who have gone before, Jacob, Peter, John, Paul, and Mary Magdalene, in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Hear the word of the Lord and rejoice in his promises. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus, amen.